So, back to what I was saying before. My theory. Oh, God. Um, Steve Rogers did not have a girlfriend before he went into the service. Says who? The History Channel. So, <laughs> he becomes Captain America. And from that moment on, a symbol of America, he is rushed to the front lines. He becomes a war hero. Then, he is frozen in ice. Right. So, based on right. everything you've told me, mm -hmm. after he gets unfrozen, he goes from world-threatening disaster to world-threatening disaster. That's when he's not a fugitive from the law, right? So it seems like he was pretty, pretty busy. All you're doing is repeating everything that I've already told you about my friend and colleague. Obviously, Captain America was a virgin. Look out! <laughs> What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder. I'm your host Warren Thompson and this exclusive clip was released by IMDB today and I really really love this clip for so many reasons. There are so many different easter eggs and setups in this one minute video. It is crazy awesome from talking about Captain America being a virgin which is something that you would never really think Marvel Studios would talk about but She-Hulk is going to to possibly giving us a setup for the next solo Hulk movie which is rumored to be World War Hulk. This clip has so much to it and it's funny and we get the origin story of She-Hulk. So let's jump into the breakdown and talk about all of these Easter eggs and the setup for the next solo Hulk film. And of course, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. So this clip is hilarious because we essentially get the origin of She-Hulk here and the reason it kind of all happens is because she's making fun of Steve Rogers, Captain America. So we start off with Jennifer Walters and her cousin, Bruce Banner, aka the Hulk, in the car. And Jennifer states that she has a theory and the theory is about Captain America and the theory is that Captain America is a virgin and it's kind of funny because she presents facts and evidence to support her case which is funny because she's a lawyer that's what she does professionally that's what she does for a living she argues facts and evidence and you can see that she clearly brings that into her personal life as well but it's also hilarious because Bruce Banner has known Steve Rogers for a while and has been through so much with him and he was even there when he went back in time stayed back in time but then came back to give the shield to Sam. So Bruce Banner has really been by Steve Rogers' side for a while, with the exception of the time that he went away after Age of Ultron. But he's listening to her and he's kind of laughing and shaking his head because this is his friend and she is coming up with these pretty crazy theories that actually kind of seem to be true. At least before Avengers Endgame. Hopefully after Avengers Endgame, once he got with Peggy, the virgin thing went away. I'm assuming it did. But if you're not paying attention, one detail that you might have missed is the sling on Bruce Banner's arm. His arm is still hurt from Avengers Endgame where he snapped and it permanently damaged his arm it seems like. Now what's interesting is that he is not even in the Hulk form in this shot. And pretty much every time that we've seen him in a trailer or a clip, he is the Hulk. Specifically Professor Hulk, which is how we left him after Endgame. But during Endgame, at the end, Professor Hulk still had the sling on his arm. Also not to mention that in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings as post credit scene, we see Bruce Banner via hologram and he still has the sling on his arm there as well. So something seemingly happens during She-Hulk that allows Bruce Banner to fully recover and heal his arm. And it could actually come down to what happens immediately after this car crash. Now, another reason I find this funny is because this is the origin story of She-Hulk. And Jennifer Walters basically becomes She-Hulk because she was kind of making fun of Steve Rogers. Let me explain. This origin is a little bit different from the comics, but reflects it a lot because in the comics, Bruce Banner is having a hard time being the Hulk. So he decides to pay his cousin a visit because she was always easy to talk to. So he goes and he visits her, but a man by the name of Nick Nicholas Trask hires people to kill Jennifer Walters because she is defending a client that he is at odds with. So he pays people to go and kill her and she does get shot, but Bruce Banner is there and he ends up taking her away and he goes to a hospital and he decides that she needs a blood transfusion. So he gives her his blood, which is in turn how she becomes She-Hulk and it actually is what saves her life. Now, obviously this is a little bit different here, but you can see how the origin story reflects it in the MCU now. Now here is a huge, huge, detail that has so many implications for the future of the MCU and that is the ship that shows up and causes them to crash. If you notice, this is the exact same ship that the Grandmaster had in Thor Ragnarok. It's not his ship, but it's the same exact design. You can see that the paint is a little bit different, but the model of the ship is exactly the same. So this ship is most likely 
from Sakaar. This could mean that this ship has come from the Grand Master. The Grand Master still could be hunting for his champion, as he called the Hulk. And it looks like he finally tracked him down on Earth. This means that the cause of the accident was actually because somebody was trying to assassinate or kidnap and bring back to Sakaar Bruce Banner, not Jennifer Walters. But here's what this means for the MCU and how it could actually set up World War Hulk. The story of World War Hulk in the comics starts by the Illuminati actually banishing Bruce Banner to a different planet. They actually trick him. The Illuminati deems that he is too dangerous to keep on Earth. So they essentially trick him into going into outer space, but then they just kind of shoot him past the moon and send him to an another planet. And the planet that he ends up on is Sakaar. From there on out, he actually becomes Gladiator Hulk on Sakaar, and that's what we saw in Thor Ragnarok. However, he ends up becoming the king of the planet. He gets a wife, she gets pregnant, but the ship that the Illuminati sent him to the planet on ends up exploding, killing his wife and his unborn child. And the Hulk is obviously furious, so he heads back to Earth, stopping on the moon to defeat Black Bolt, the king of the Inhumans, and then going to the Earth and defeats pretty much every hero there is. And this Hulk is super strong because he absorbs so much radiation on the planet Sakaar. Now, of course, this show is going to be about She-Hulk. If we've learned anything from the other shows, it's that Marvel Studios, when they do a Disney Plus series about a specific character or characters, they stick to the story about the characters. So I'm not assuming we're going to dive too much into Sakaar and She-Hulk. However, I do think this is a big setup for the next Hulk movie. Clearly, people on Sakaar, whether that's the Grandmaster or anybody else, are searching for the Hulk. And this could eventually lead him going back to Sakaar. Or it could lead to people that he loves getting hurt, like in this opening scene here. The ship causes the crash that leads to Jennifer Walters needing the blood transfusion from Bruce Banner and her becoming She-Hulk. So obviously, she gets so hurt in this crash that she's gonna die unless she gets a blood transfusion from Bruce Banner. And this is obviously going to piss Bruce Banner off, and he's going to go, what the heck, why are people searching for? me and I'm betting that he tries to figure out what is behind all of this or who is behind all of this. We do see the Hulk a lot in the trailers for the show, but that could all be from the very first episode when he's just kind of helping Jennifer get used to being a Hulk and showing her what she can actually do, her potential. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if Bruce Banner and the Hulk were only in one or two episodes and then he dips and heads to Sakaar so he can find out why people are hunting him down. And that could be the setup for the next Hulk movie. And honestly, I really Really hope it happens because I'm ready to see a true Hulk rage out and tear people apart. Now, another interesting thing about this clip is that we don't actually see Bruce Banner turn into the Hulk during the accident, which you would think would happen. But if you look closely at Bruce Banner, you can see that he has a device on his left arm. We can't be 100% sure what this device is. However, this could be a device that kind of prevents him from turning into the Hulk. Perhaps he uses this when he's out in public. In case he gets angry, it prevents him from turning into the Hulk, so he doesn't really have to worry about it. After all, everybody knows who Bruce Banner is at this point in time. They that he's the Hulk, so they might get a little uncomfortable around him in public. Yes, he's a hero, but at the same time, the Hulk has caused a lot of destruction in the world, so perhaps this is just a safety measure. Now, I'm assuming that after the crash, Bruce does turn into the Hulk so he can save himself and then his cousin. Plus, not to mention, I'm sure he would Hulk out being pissed that the ship caused this crash and hurt his cousin to a near fatal point. And maybe from then on out, he just chooses to remain in Hulk form. Or maybe he can't get himself to go back to Bruce Banner form. We'll have to wait and see on that. But in the meantime, let me know what you think about this clip. I think it's pretty awesome and I think it's really funny as well. Jennifer Walters is going to break the fourth wall in She-Hulk, so I'm really excited for that and I hope it's funny. So leave your thoughts down below and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest Marvel news and videos. For live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.